Hi guys. It is a lovely 4th of July. Unbelievable. Saturday, 4th of July, 2020, and uh, the party's starting to form at Bugs in a Jar Farm. We got seven people on their way over, and anybody else catching this at the last minute, come see us today. So before the party begins, do what I try to do every Friday, and that is bring you my ecological meltdown roundup rant from the folks at mongabay.com. But we are a dollar short and a day late here at Bugs in a Jar. But let's get right into it for the five or six people looking into the Doomosphere on the 4th of July. Take it away, Manga Bay. I don't even want to know what this means for the price of silver. We're not going to start that whine again. Uh, gold priced at $1,700 per ounce brings new gold rush to the Brazilian Amazon. Yes, global instability brought on by the Corona Panic and the attendant meltdown of the world economy has sent gold prices soaring to $1,700 per ounce, their highest value in 10 years. That surge has triggered a new intensified gold rush in the Brazilian Amazon as entrepreneurs invest in expensive equipment and cheap labor. Yes, the lucrative unpoliced industry is causing deforestation, river destruction, mercury contamination, yes, and an invasion by hundreds of thousands of miners. Yes, despite being an illegal activity, large gold mining dredges operate openly in the Amazon. Yep, yep, yep. And as I was reporting in my own book on the Peruvian Amazon uh, 11 years ago, the people, a, a lot of the people actually doing the mining are Amazon Indians. Who do you think is actually down there in the pits with the mercury? It is Amazon Indians uh, raping and pillaging their own indigenous reserves. Okay, let's talk about palm oil in Africa. They took it over by force. Corruption and palm oil in Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is among the poorest countries in the world. Yes. Uh, and so you better believe that the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund are alive and well in Sierra uh, Leone. The country has been rushing into deals with foreign investors without first enacting legislation to protect the interests of local landowners. Do you think so? And you, you can uh, believe what that means for the palm oil industry. In less than 10 years, the forest and farmland uh, has been transformed into thousands of hectares of monoculture oil palm fields. Yes. Uh, do you think so? From Sierra Leone next door pretty much to Cameroon. If they take our lands, we will be dead. Cameroon village battles palm oil giant. Take a wild guess who's going to win that. Uh, this is a continuation of the same story about these giant planet eaters, actually out of Belgium. Today, the company 
owns more than 58,000 hectares. That's actually 50, uh, that's 120, about 175,000 acres that they have obliterated off the planet in the Cameroon. Uh, there you go. Uh, how the legacy of colonialism built a palm oil empire. Yes, due to the legacy of decades of colonial rule and the subsequent lack of local expertise and capital needed to meet the requirements of the World Bank's economic incentive programs, newly independent governments drew on foreign capital during decolonization in the mid 20th century to keep businesses and exports running. Anybody who wants to know how this story works, you need to read um, that uh, John Perkins confession, John Perkins Confessions of an Economic Hitman uh, spells out how this works. Uh, there you go. Uh, this is yet another article just looking at this one planet eater. Um, okay, we're gonna go from uh, from sub-Saharan Africa back to South America. Yes, in Ecuador. Huh. Ecuador, a, a provincial court ordered the Ministry of Environment and Water to send a report detailing how it is monitoring illegal mining, logging, and drug trafficking activities in the region and to provide information on corona panic protocols for oil companies operating there. There you go. Uh, and take a while, once again, take a wild guess as, as Ecuador was put on the economic lockdown. Uh, yes, the Waroni uh, claim correctly that all of these industries never stopped during corona panic quarantines did not apply to the oil companies, the miners, the loggers right on about their business. You would not believe that pollution threatens birds in Madagascar. Hmm. Do you think so? Uh, never would have thought of that. Here's the latest uh, update on the impending salamander apocalypse heading to the U.S. Uh, researchers think that about half of salamander species may be susceptible to the deadly fungus heading this way. Yes. Uh, all right. Well, you can now look forward to palm oil biodiesel saving the planet. There you go. Palm oil biodiesel. Yes. The Indonesian government has handed over, which is another word for allocating 195 million dollars from its budget to subsidize producers of palm oil biodiesel, justifying the move as necessary to boosting the economy out of a corona panic induced slump. Yes, campaigners have blasted the move. Ha! Huh. Do you think so? 
Studies have shown that the deforestation inherent in the production of palm oil biodiesel means it emits up to three times as much CO2 as fossil fuels, making crop-based biofuels counterproductive to efforts to cut emissions. And this, uh, again, Planet of the Humans talks about this, this, this unadulterated horse pucky uh, biodiesel. Uh, you know, part of the United Nations sustainability goals, how we're going to save the planet from fossil fuels by going over to palm oil biodiesel when uh, it sends out three much as CO2 into the air as burning oil. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Wow. Corona panic halts matchmaking attempt for female Sumatran rhino. Yes. Uh, conservation is searching for a male Sumatran orangutan to join a lone female as part of a captive breeding program have had to call off the search for the rest of the year. The field work has been halted by the corona panic along with other conservation activities. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, do you think so? Let's see. Here's another one. Uh, for investors concerned about deforestation. There you go. Investors concerned about deforestation. The sustainability nonprofit group series has released a new investor guide to deforestation and climate change. Yes. Uh, agricultural commodities such as palm oil, soy, beef, and pulp and paper are major drivers of deforestation. Do you think so? But uh, you can go to this handy guide and invest your money into companies with deforestation and climate commitments. Oh yes, uh, I do not know why Rhett Butler continues to insult my intelligence, your intelligence, his own intelligence, by believing one word of this crap. I, I have one problem with Manga Bay and uh, how, uh, how they just blindly uh, support the, these obvious BS uh, sustainability commitments. They're, they're a joke. I know it. Sancho Panza knows it. Rhett Butler knows damn well that these sustainability commitments are a joke. Why he keeps uh, giving these, uh, gr these greenwashing press releases to these planet eaters, uh, I do not know. Anyway, moving on. Uh, all right, using technology to combat environmental crime in the Amazon. Yes. I would say something uh, about what technology we need to use on Jair Bozo Nero, uh, but I don't want to lose this channel and end up in prison. All right, moving on. Uh, let's see. You will not believe that IKEA, IKEA is using illegally sourced wood from Ukraine. Hmm. A new report provides evidence that some of the beech wood used in IKEA's flagship Terje chair and other products came from a state-run forestry enterprise in Ukraine that was violating the law. 
Hmm, do you think so? And uh, as I was just saying about these BS sustainability places, campaigners say the Forest Stewardship Council, one of the world's largest and most influential timber certification organizations, failed to either note or take action on the illegal activity. Yes. Uh, here is a, an interview with some bear hugger about saving the sun bears in Borneo. Good luck. You can kiss the sun bears in Borneo. Goodbye. Uh, okay. So here is the Forest Stewardship Council actually doing some sort of work has calculated that the Corindo Corporation, whatever they are, has deprived indigenous communities in Indonesia's popular province of $300 million by underpaying them for their timber harvested from their lands. Corindo dismisses the figure as pure fantasy and claims it has made a loss on the logging opera operations as it cleared land for plantations. So Manga Bay ran the numbers and they come out uh, with $320 million. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, we have a commentary that does not necessarily reflect the views of Manga Bay it is time to rein in the, the industries devouring the world's last standing forest. Do you think so? Gaurav Madan uh, from the Friends of the Earth argues that industrial commodity producers are failing to rein in destruction of the world's tropical forest despite a raft of commitments to end deforestation. Yes. Uh, quote, it is time we end our addiction to endless consumption and realize our future is tied to the fate of the planet. He writes, do you think so? Okay. The first Modern day marine fish has officially now gone extinct. More may follow. Do you think so? Uh, the smooth hand fish uh, is the first marine bony fish to go extinct in modern times, likely due to habitat loss and destructive fishing practices. There you go. The other 13 species of hand fish are also threatened with extinction due to habitat loss, pollution, destructive fishing practices, and other human-linked causes. There you go. Uh, a wild ass makes history. It is a very short 4th of July. Uh, we're already at the wild ass. An Asiatic wild ass or coulon made history when it became the first of its species to cross to the eastern steppe in Mongolia in nearly seven decades, uh, where I'm sure it was promptly shot. Uh, unbelievably, it, you're not mentioning that it had been shot. You will not believe this. In Mongolia, habitat degradation, human development, and barriers to movement, such as fences, all threaten 
the Kulon. Yes. Anyway, you can kiss your wild ass goodbye. All right. Well, it was a short and sweet uh, ecological collapse roundup. So now that that's out of the way, I can uh, wrap up ranting for the 4th of July. And uh, we have some bison burgers. We're going to go eat some buffalo on the 4th of July. What could be more American than grilling buffalo burgers on the 4th of July? Yummy, yummy, yummy. I suggest, I suggest uh, you get out there and eat all of the buffalo burgers you can, while wow, you still can, and happy birthday, America. Bye, guys. Sorry.